Continuing on with the physiological fundamental series, last time we talked about motor recruitment, this time we're talking about mechanical tension. This is going to be split into two parts, active mechanical tension and passive mechanical tension. This time we're going to talk about active mechanical tension. I'm not going to lie, in Tina's video, he didn't even explain what mechanical tension is. So basically, active mechanical tension happens when we have actin and myosin cross bridge formation. So basically, we have this myosin filament right here, this is the myosin head, and then we have the actin filament right here. So what happens is the myosin head attaches to the actin filament, and then it pulls the actin in this way, then it lets go, and then it repeats. Now the force that's produced by these cross bridges is going to be determined by the speed of the contraction. This is what we call the force velocity relationship. Now I'm stealing this from Chris, but if we have a fast contraction velocity, what happens is the myosin heads are going to move past very fast and spend very little time producing force compared to if we have a slow contraction velocity, where it's going to spend a lot of time producing force. So a slower contraction speed means more mechanical tension, while a faster contraction speed means less mechanical tension. This is why understanding motor unit recruitment is so important to understanding mechanical tension, because now you can understand why this will have less mechanical tension than this, because in this, we're going to have a slower contraction velocity compared to this. Sure, this takes more effort, but effort has nothing to do with mechanical tension. You have to separate these things. Motor unit recruitment has to do with effort, Mechanical tension has to do with the contraction speed. So this will have a low amount of motor unit recruitment, but for the motor units that you do recruit, you're going to have a high degree of mechanical tension. If I do this, then I'm going to have a higher amount of motor unit recruitment, but I'm going to have a lower amount of mechanical tension because of the fast contraction velocity. And we have mechanoreceptors inside of our muscle fibers that detect mechanical tension. And once it detects mechanical tension, then the process of adding myofibrils occurs. So basically, we have this right here, okay? This is a sarcomere, right? And then these are the myofibrils. So basically what happens is it adds more myofibrils in parallel. That was a pretty good explanation of active mechanical tension. So stay tuned for next time when I explain passive mechanical tension.